Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. I have been solving math problems out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. This is where you're going to find the real exam to practice for the, for the test. There are seven exams in it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 208, number 15, very last one in the set. Since it's the very last one in the set, it is, it is supposed to be a difficult question. Only 20% of the people who took the exam, this particular exam, got this particular question right. 80% uh, missed it, four-fifths of the people missed it. Let's take a look at it. 2 raised to 30 minus 2 raised to 29 over 2 versus 2 raised to 28. Well, the very first thing you have to realize is that there are four, answer, four possible answer choices here. A, B, C, D. Even though there are four possible answer choices, in this particular case, Whenever you find numbers in the two columns, a whole bunch of numbers here, a whole bunch of numbers here, nothing else, there has to be an answer. There has to be an answer of this quantity, there has to be an answer of this quantity, it rules out D. It can never be D. Answer is either A, B, or C. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to solve this problem in two ways. One, there are two ways of solving this problem, always, uh, in this exam. One is what I call the classical way, the orthodox way, the traditional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the proper way, the mathematical way. The way your math teacher was expected to solve this problem, the way these people who give you the exam, ETS people right here, the ETS expects you to solve this problem, or other way, second way is what I call the creative way, uh, non-traditional way, unorthodox way, uh, the quick and dirty way. Which way should I do first? Let's do the quick and dirty way first. Here's what you do. You see, if you're sitting there and asking yourself, if you're sitting there and asking yourself, oh my God, how much is 2 raised to 30 and how much is 2 raised to 29, that will take me forever to figure it out. If you're trying to sit there, if you're, if you're sitting there and trying to figure out 2 raised to 30, you're missing the point of the question. This, these are not called quantitative computation, they're called quantitative comparison. You're supposed to compare them, not compute the bloody thing. So here's what you do. I'm going to show you the creative way first, the quick and dirty way first, and then I'm going to show you the academic way if I have the time. What you do is, Make up a small number. They, they're telling, let me do it in a different color. They're telling me 2 raised to 30 and 2 raised to 29. This power is one less than this one. So I'm going to make up some smaller power. Let's make it 3 and 2 if you like. Whatever logic that will apply here would also hold here. 2 raised to 3 minus 2 raised to 2 over 2. Well, 2 raised to 3 is 8. 2 raised to 2 is 4 over 2. 4, 8 minus 4 is 4 over 2, which is 2. This boils down to 2. Now notice that my that my 30 became 3 and my 29 became 2. In other words, I'm taking a difference of 27. I'm taking away 27 from it. This 30 became 3, 27 off, 29 became 2, 27 off. And at the end up I at the end I ended up with 2. This 2 raised to 28 should also become 28 minus 27 because that's what I'm taking. I'm taking 27 off from everything. And of course that's simply 2 raised to 1, which is also 2. And if you don't like this thing, you can try out with 4. The same thing with 4. Let me do it very quickly with the 4 if you like. And I started with 4 here. 2 raised to 4 minus 2 raised to 3 over 2. That's 16 minus 8, which is 8, over 2, which is 4, which is same as 2 squared. See, I, I, I did 4 here. I did 4 here, even though the actual number is 30. I did 3 here, even though the actual number is 29. It's a difference of 26. I have to do the same thing here. Take away 26 from here, it becomes 2. 2 squared is 4, which is exactly what I found here. 4 and 4. You see? 2 and 2. You see? 2 and 2. The answer is C. So it doesn't matter what. You can put 5 and five and 4 if you like. It's just the bigger the number, the more work you have to do. You, you can do it this way, or you can do it in a traditional way with the algebra, which I'm going to show you in a second. I need to erase everything from the blackboard, and I have to look at the time in the back, see how much time I have. Just give me one second.
I'm five minutes into it, so I'm going to erase everything now, and I'm going to redo it. Uh, I shouldn't have taken so much room. I should have done it in half the blackboard. Now I have to erase it. Let's erase that. Two raised to thirty. Minus two raised to twenty nine over two. So let's 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 start then. Can I write two raised to thirty as two times two raised to twenty nine? Of course, why not? Two times two raised to twenty nine is same as two raised to thirty. Minus two raised to twenty nine over two. Now I want you to look at this part here before I go any further. If I tell you that a times b minus b, what would you do with this quantity? You can take out the b common. b can be taken out common. This is same as b times a minus 1. That is the same thing. I'm taking, I look at this term and I take out the b common. If I take out the b, I'm left with a. Here, if I take out the b, I'm left with 1. As you can see, b times a is b a, a b and then minus b. You see? That's what I'm going to do here. My b here is 2 raised to 29. b here, b equals 2 raised to 29, which is what I'm going to do here. 2 raised to 29 times, if I take out the 2 raised to 29, I'm left with 2 on the first term. Here, if I take out 2 raised to 29, I'm left with 1 over 2, which is same as 2 raised to 29 over 2 because 2 minus 1 is just 1. 2 raised to 29 over 2 is just 2 raised to 28 which is same as column B. We started out with column A. So I'm going to raise this part here so it doesn't confuse us. Put it here. A times B minus B is same as B times A minus 1, which is what we're using here. And in this scenario, in this scenario, your B equals 2 raised to 29. And your A equals yes. A minus 1 and your A equals 2. That's what it is. But anyway, this is another way of solving it. Just give me one more second, one more time. So there are two ways of doing this thing. In a non-classical way, you just, if they're giving you 2 raised to, uh, for, you know, if, they, if, they, if they're telling you 2 raised to 20, 30 and 2 raised to 29, just make up a smaller number. As long as you follow the pattern, you should be okay. As long as you subtract the same. Subtract, you know, subtract... Uh, 26 from here, subtract 26 from here, all of a sudden this becomes 2 raised to 4 and this becomes 2 raised to 3. And then work on that and whatever the answer is, you have to do the same thing with the other column. Subtract the uh, 26 from the other power and then compare the smaller quantities. If you, uh, that, way, that way you can actually handle it. That, that, that way it becomes feasible. But strictly speaking, classically speaking, this is what they expect you to do. The other method was just a quick and dirty method. So there are two methods. In either case, the answer is C. And now you can see why the vast majority of the people who took the exam, 80% of the people who took the exam, missed this one. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to work with me uh, for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to these questions, or if you should talk to me about anything at all about GRE, any aspect of the GRE, Go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P, prep, F-O-R-4, -E and send me an email. All right? Thanks.